So I'm getting ready for another day of creative work, you know, in my in my workspace. And honestly, just like any other day, I have, um, you know, there's always reasons to just be be a bit distracted, even though I have a bunch of commitments to meet, right? I mean, um, the work is rewarding itself. I mean, we all know this creative industry folks, uh, you know, struggle with that because we love to do what we do. And then there's the whole monetary thing, what have you. We know it's rewarding to do the to to draw, to write, to make stuff, uh, code, what have you. Um, that's awesome. But then, even though that's the case, you know, sitting there working to get ready to do the work and get past feeling stuck and feeling distracted and whatnot. Um, sometimes I get past this by making a game of it and um, some kind of reward or consequence of having you know getting the work done or not right and so i'm curious how jersey handles these situations like what kind of workday game does he create or doesn't he right um does he think it's weird that sometimes i i actually do something i call the victory donut um well that's what we're about to discuss on today's creative work chat episode of lean into art Welcome to this Lean Into Art cast creative work chat. This is where we explore creative problem, things that come up as being visual storytellers, teaching artists, and learners. My name is Jersey Drozd. <laughs> My name is Jersey Drozd. Cartoon I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist. Well, I'm Rob Stenzinger. I'm a UX designer, uh, interactive maker, and a teaching artist. Ah, glad to see you again, Rob, for another creative work chat. And and it's a I love this topic. I was literally having this conversation an hour ago with somebody about when they feel stuck on something and what 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 are some of <laughs> the strategies that you do when you're stuck on a thing. And you mentioned that in the intro, right? What do you mm. do when you're stuck? Um, but also like like motivation. This happens all the time when I'm doing school visits, when I'm working with young people, they say, What do you do about drawing when you don't feel like drawing, right? It's a big question because the moment you commit to doing this in any kind of serious capacity, you are going to come up against the threat of the resistance, right? Mm -hmm. Not a good day for it. Other things getting in the way, that other life stuff, right? So, and yeah, that resistance, is, I mean, a lot of us, I, I think we're referring to what oh, uh, the war of art, right? Yeah, Stephen, Stephen Pressfield. Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of an and, old book but, now, but yeah. It is, it is, but it's a really portable, uh, relatable concept of, um, you know, the bucket of stuff that somehow feels, um, it just causes a tension of, of your um, focus, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and I don't know exactly what it is, and, and um, I've got some ideas for talking about this, but I want to go anywhere that, that you want to go talking about this whole um, circumstance of, well, feeling motivated and like you know people ask questions all, like this all the time like how do you um you know how do you get into it when, when there's so many reasons to not feel like it right so empathizing with uh your own stress or stuff going on in the world or um sometimes just the choice paralysis because of multiple commitments and which one do you pick and all that and um and i mean it's clearly uh you know huge disclaimers i suppose this kind of thing is is different for everybody based on your um you know nature nurture neural circumstance and mm -hmm. um i think broad brush it's overall probably possible to overcome and i think we're we're talking about um you know overall being in a in that space of it's kind of like the difference between therapy and coaching right so in coaching you're mm -hmm. looking at um how do you um, how do you get better when you're already functioning, right? Uh, to to work at stuff, and uh, but therapy helps you, you know, get to that point of of um, you know being at your level of of um, functioning health, right? So we're that's an that's an assumed baseline. If in case you feel like yelling at the TV, right? So. <laughs> yeah, I I think yeah we're talking about something that we both, I think, in our own ways, learn to manage. And I don't yeah. think it's something where the management ever really ends. Like, I don't feel like this is something I have 
conquered and put aside. That's the other part of my life where that doesn't, you know, where that would constantly bubble up and I would not feel motivated to do things. Um, Someone recently described me as very driven and disciplined. I'm like, well, you know, I, it doesn't always feel that way. <laughs> and, and, and there are a number of tricks I play on myself to keep myself in the game because that's, yeah. <laughs> Rob, I was people... hoping you, yes, good. Yeah. Jersey has tricks. I like to collect tricks. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And it, cause like, it's funny, this topic came up years ago on this project. And I remember kind of rebelling against it a little bit in the sense of, I don't rely on rewards to get me to commit to the thing. Um, I don't have a victory donut. I don't say, well, you get to play a video game for an hour after you do this thing. I don't have that negotiation with myself, but I think I have a very similar kind of negotiation where it's not as explicit. It's a little bit more um, implied, mm. but um, but yeah, but I definitely do have reward systems similar to uh, the victory donut. Do you want to explain the victory donut since we love that? Or do, are we going to like tease it out the whole episode? We'll never talk about it. It's, gonna be, <laughs> it's we just uh, this is this is the opposite of you know it's this is not Chekhov's donut. No. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's see the story. This has um, this is something from you know my you know recent past that got unearthed during a um, lean into our uh, monthly lab session. It's something that we do for patrons who are um, at the ten dollar or higher level of of every month, and and we get together and do this creative accountability thing. And this topic came up of of you know well, how do you sort of trick yourself into getting to work? And something about that, I was like, wait a minute, I haven't talked that much about the victory donut. Anyway, so then what's the victory donut? Um, it's a well, it's literally a donut that I would set at my desk. Um, and then make sort of this, this commitment, this, um, in a way, a small bet with myself of, well, if I get these certain things done that I need to get done, um, you know, basically facing a daunting thing and then turning it into a few smaller things to just make some steps forward. Right. And, but if I get those steps done, I eat the donut. If I don't get the steps done, and let's say I really want this donut. I like donuts a lot. I actually, I don't know. It's, it's like, especially if I turn food into a symbol, I know this is horrible for lots of people, right? Where they're like, don't turn food into that. That's not <laughs> okay. I know it doesn't work for everybody. Do it, do it with something else. Do it with, I don't know, hugging a cat or, um, I don't know, pick something, um, uh, you know, uh, but but something that that hits you at multiple levels that's really visceral right um and uh so anyway i you know get these things done and i literally taste victory i am consuming <laughs> the symbol of victory at the end i'm infused with power you know and i feel awesome about it so i oh. th this is the bet and this is the story around the victory donut but if i don't get it done I also do feel powerful because I give the donut to someone else and, mm. uh, and, and it's, it's, um, if it comes up, I'll mention it like, oh yeah, you know, this uh, victory donut and I, you know, you know, didn't get, didn't get the things done, but you did awesome today. You should have this. I want you to have this, what have you. Oftentimes it goes fine. But once in a while, someone starts thinking about the story and then it hits them. They're like, wait a minute, I'm eating Rob's symbol of victory. And it gets weird. And it's like, no, no, it's no longer that. It doesn't mean that to you. It kind of, tra tra you know, whatever. Anyway, but that's the gist of it. It's this small bet to, you know, experience the reward or the consequence uh, um, related to tricking myself into moving forward if I'm feeling daunted. That That is a story just like imbued with so much careful thought and, and self-knowledge of where you get energy and where you get strength. Right. Um, you know, it's, I, I, I think that that's part of the puzzle is what in talking about this, we're going to talk about strategies we came up for us with for ourselves. I'm hoping we can dig at the principles behind that too. 
because the the principles are going to be what makes this thing replicable because Victory Donut isn't going to work for everybody, right? My tricks are not going to work for everybody. Joseph Coco is trying to guess at what my tricks are and says, Jersey keeps a proud father around who, after he completes any tasks, pats him on the back and says, good job, son. Oh my God, you know me. <laughs> Just <laughs> Joseph sees me. Would that I could, right? Um, would that John Irwin himself come in and say, I believe in you? I'd be like, oh my God, I, I would do anything for that. Um, but but no, I don't I don't have that. But but it, But the point is, is that, it takes, I feel like there's some self-knowledge has to go into whatever strategy you devise. And how do you achieve that self-knowledge? Introspection, careful conversations with yourself, journaling, whatever method you want to use to have a really serious look at what are your habits? What are you feeling when that resistance kicks in, right? On a, very, on a recently in cast, I told the story of how um, I felt like anxiety around addressing a task in front of me. Like I felt my heart racing. Like I could feel my heart beating faster as I was thinking about the next thing I needed to do. And so I named my inner voice who gets, who gets very active in those sessions. Uh, I named him Andy. I was like, Andy, we're going for a walk and you and I are going to have a talk. And you know, and the talk was whenever Andy started going like, Oh, this is the time you're going to fail. Ah, this is the time you really drop the ball, pal. I said, oh, check out that birch tree. Andy, isn't that a pretty birch tree? That's really nice. It's beautiful out today. You know? Um, so like I, what I'm pointing toward is this idea of something I'm, I'm practicing and I'm not awesome at yet is being aware of what my body is telling me and being aware of how I'm feeling when those moments of resistance kick in and what kinds of strategies can I try to work with that? Like using my teaching language, like when I'm in the classroom and I got an obstreperous student, I'm like, how can I use this? How can I take that energy and turn it into something positive in this moment rather than shut it down? Right. Like that's my last option. Last option is to shut a kid down. But if I can get them integrated into this and use whatever they're feeling right now as a way to channel us towards our our uh, our goal or shift the goal. Right. Maybe we got to mm. move the goal for today. Um, that's my preferred method. And so I'm, I'm trying to use that on myself. Right. And so I think it, I was intuitively doing that in years past when I came up with some of these tricks of breaking things into smaller tasks. Um mm. But well, yeah, I would I would say that there's, you know, the other, you know, the other side of it turning, you know, and, and, and it's also like a, more, a robust system would come from um, understanding a map of what doesn't work for you, what works against you, but also what works for you. Mm -hmm. And the like the idea of, well, small victories, uh, progress over perfection, experiencing the um this a different narrative of, of saying like instead of i'm not done i'm not done it's like i got something done that's nice i think this system is a building block of knowing your uh, oh, not just one building block it's a lot of building blocks because think about the um i literally said i consume the symbol of of a victory or something like that right and so the story of feeling in like infused with um a positive outcome for or you know for overcoming and, and taking taking an action that that um that led to this is really important to me right so and that's self-knowledge um Vic, uh, mm. the speaking of victory donut um jersey has the article i wrote at interactive-storyteller.com we'll have a link in the show notes too um to my article that provides this story as well a pastry a promise and accountability and um someday i'll turn this into t-shirts or something or a poster or what have you <laughs> um, sarah sarah lutfi's in the in the discord chatting with us while we while we do the show and she says uh i also just can't get over the commitment to giving the donut to someone else i'd eat the victory donut even if i didn't make the goal i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i feel like that that's yeah. part of it part of baked into these tricks too like with Victor, I think Sarah's point is something I think really critical here is that there is a commitment to the making the commitment, right? There's a commitment yeah. to the game of making the commitment. So for me, one of the ones that I do is I made an external commitment to do a live stream 
twice a week, one public one, one Patreon one, right? Mm -hmm. And that means I have to have something to draw (laughs) in front of people (laughs) so they don't have to just look at my face like they are right now, right? It's like the, the, the whole thing is it's a drawing live stream. That's the premise. Therefore, I have to make headway on my projects, whether it is like for the Thursday one, it's got to be something to do with Baron Von Bear. And if it's the Tuesday one, it's one of the drawing practices of drawing cute, brave creatures, right? So that external commitment means that I feel, um, what am I trying to say? I mean, yes, there. Thank you. Thank you for the word. Yes. I'm accountable to a group of people which means I'm going to show up for them. And I did this back in 2002 with my first webcomic. Is like we had an IRC chat that would was live for one hour every update night. So every, what was it, Tuesday night at 11 p.m. Eastern, I would log into this IRC channel, and I would post the new page of my webcomic, and I would chat with the people who showed up to talk with me about what happened next, you know? Mm. That's, and this is where, it, uh, it's building blocks. It's not, um like one simple thing it's this web of stuff that connects with your motivations that uh that you chose right it's a game so games um different folks have you know different definitions folks who study game design academically love to debate this stuff and the you know a definition i like a lot it's from you know a book that's pretty old now um but uh, jane mcgonagall's reality is broken broad brush it's a game is like this voluntary challenge that has uh you know some feedback and outcomes right something like that it's been a while since i've read it but you know so that's what you're doing here in in a game isn't just like one piece on a screen or one one card it's it's a whole deck of things it's a whole bunch of choice choices choices and things that remind you of the meaning of it right Mm -hmm. um anyway uh, we may probably come in and out of talking about game design as we explore this but um uh the the accountability aspect is 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 a big deal right so you think about there's positive there's positive um feedback and negative feedback there's intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation so like if you get either positive or negative from both things right so you chose to to show up and to be accountable you you proclaimed your um your plan to to a group um some collective bunch of folks outside and then now what if you don't do it so like some kind of you know i don't know if they don't chase you or 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 like send you you know um maybe you know, a bunch of grumpy stuff but they might say hey where'd you go or they mm-hmm. you know like you know that someone cared and then then you didn't do the thing that's the negative feedback right there yeah um, and 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 i that comes from my self knowledge of knowing that i am a people pleaser and if i disappoint an audience it, i feel it hard <laughs> so um yeah so anyway so um people so uh, Mike White brings up the whole like I'd eat the, the, I'd probably eat the donut anyway, paraphrasing a, a comment. And mm. maybe so the donut may not be the right choice for you, or maybe it really, really is, right? <laughs> because now imagine not eating it and <laughs> feeling good about meeting that commitment, saying that um like the 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 showing up and failing is um it, it that's that's a i don't know that's a worthy outcome also but having that um yeah I mean, I mean having that uh result where it's almost i mean honestly it turns into a gift it goes from a victory donut to a gift donut and it feels good to give someone a donut you know <laughs> um and so it's it like it actually makes vict- like the the failing uh not feel as bad right and mm-hmm. it's like and it's becomes a social thing of like you know Here's what I tried to do. Oh, that wasn't realistic. Um, or, or you know, what came up? What got in the way? And so, it's it turns it into a social thing. Oddly, um, it's another piece of the dynamic. Oh, well, and and what I what I'm hearing in there is it's helping you do some um, externalization um, of thinking in terms of what you what happened there. Is it is it simply the red stamp that says fail? 
<laughs> did you did you show up on fail blog or was there something else that like came out of that? Um, well, it's a, it's a tend and befriend thing of like yeah. I get to tend to a relationship instead of um, you know getting these this sugary, sweet, awesome symbol of uh, accomplish accomplishment. Um, yeah, literally yeah. ingesting it and then becoming it. Then I become the victory donut. But anyway, because <laughs> you are what you eat. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, and, and and Joseph's also bringing up some ideas about like, are you rewarding the effort or are you rewarding the accomplishment? He says, I do a bit of both, but people seem to have an issue with rewarding effort for some reason. Yeah, the the, the conversation around that isn't, at least online, doesn't, well, I'll say online and on radio shows when I listen to the certain radio shows. It isn't terribly nuanced when we talk about uh, rewarding effort, but like this is something that I take very seriously as a teacher of young people is I make sure they don't leave the room without hearing me say, thank you for your hard work today. And when we met in person, when I taught in a, in a classroom, they would they could not leave the room without me high-fiving them and say, looking them in the eye saying, thank you for your hard work today, whether or not they finish the thing right? That counts. And I think that's part of it. Um, and I think of another external, rather an intrinsic, is this intrinsic or extrinsic? I think it's extrinsic, but it's something that is self-imposed is I put an hour limit on my live stream and I try to complete whatever task I had set out. I'm going to I say at the top of my live stream, hi, I'm Jason Droz. Today I'm going to paint this drawing I did. Right. And then I start the thing and I'm like, I'm going to, I got to paint this in an hour. And you could hear me in the live stream, like always looking at the clock. How am I doing? How am I doing? How am I doing? <laughs> One time I didn't finish. I was like, and I looked at the clock. I'm like, I got 15 minutes left. I'm like a quarter of the way done with this thing. And I like said like, okay, I have to be okay with this <laughs> in the moment, in the live stream in front of people. I'm like, I got to find some way to be okay with me not finishing this in time, you know? So I think <laughs> that that, that is, there is a, um, I would never accuse you, Rob of laying down something that had any kind of like severity in terms of no victory donut for you because you're a loser. <laughs> Only yeah. performers get the donut. <laughs> sure. Right. Victory donuts are for closers. Never seen the movie. Um, so it's um, the, the story around it matters. How yeah. you make meaning of this feedback is important. And this is yeah. where you, I mean, you're here to build yourself up, not tear yourself down. You're here to honor and acknowledge the things that are uh, healthy and that work for you for, um, you know, like why you would wire this task up with a, a, a system, right? Mm -hmm. Or this role or, or um, job, whatever it is. Uh, but there's some reason that you believe it's important enough to create a system around it to help. Um, bolster you, um, lift you up. I assume, but okay, different. I have a whole workshop about this, about uh, customizing your next creative challenge. Some folks are into different kinds of feedback. And I think that's worth tuning into also. Mm -hmm. Some people um, find the severity of, of outcomes and what they mean as great. And that's classic, um, that I think is worth bringing up and it, it has earned it is that whole series of games um, related to demon souls, right? Or mm -hmm. dark souls and all those, right? They are so severe <clears throat> in their feedback. And um, I, it was, so for me playing that game was like, I wandered into the wrong store where, I mean, and, and it was nothing but spring loaded um, with those big cartoon, uh, boxing gloves, right? Mm -hmm. And like mm -hmm. anything I'm naturally curious about, boom, punch, <laughs> punch. Like, I'm like, wow, this game's beautiful. It's fantasy, and I get, you know, there's magic and swords, do, do, do. Um, and then it just the game's like, die over. I'm like, ah, what? I, wait, what? And, you know, it's like I stubbed my toe. I fell off the castle. I can fall off the castle. Um, you know, and or like, oh, there's one little monster in front of me. Oh, they just murdered me super bad, really fast. Oh, oh God. I then slowly, painfully getting good enough at it. That feedback, that grind, that kind of severe skill thing. Honestly, I've talked at length with folks to try to understand and live vicariously to the, through their experience. I mean, doing, you know, UX research type stuff where I can get it. I can see how that works for other people. And um, yeah, it's totally, which is great. 
doesn't work for me. So I'm not going to wire up a system that does that. Other folks might though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think it's worth like, that's where the, like you said earlier, is like having this, um, an understanding of what works for you, like that, that, uh, awareness is, um, is important because otherwise it's going to be a pointless ritual. You're not going to do another, like, will you do the second victory donut for that, that you set up is a, is an interesting question too. Mm -hmm. Um, if, you, if you're, if you're not feeling it, you probably didn't tune the system in a way that makes it meaningful for you. Yeah. And speaking of like the conversations that I have with myself to find what works for me, um, I think the reason that having a snack or a game or some other sort of extrinsic thing for me to reach for upon finishing the thing, it while I I love banana cream pie, right? Like if you put a banana cream pie on the desk, it's like you get this. If you finish the thing, I'll be like, all right, I'm uh, challenge accepted. <laughs> See, I, you made this interesting. <laughs> but 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 yeah yeah, but You're but it, Falcon, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But what, what, what fills me with more pleasure, what gives me more satisfaction is knowing that headway has been made in some way, in some measurable way. So even if I don't finish the thing, is there some way I can, or let's say I'm stuck. Let's say I'm stuck. I'm working on the script. And I'm like, yeah, it's just not working today. I can't figure out what I'm going to do next. Then I can say, well, what can I do to make headway? All right. Well, let's, go down this alternate path. I haven't fully fleshed out these other aspects of the project. I haven't done uh, like some character studies of the characters interacting with one another. I haven't done a study with this particular tool that I wanted to use. This could be an opportunity while I'm stuck. Let's let my subconscious do the thing it needs to do. I'm going to be over here doing other development of another part of the project. Is there some other place I can put my attention so that headway can happen? So then that's the reward I need. Maybe I won't be able to finish this, this one task today, but I can motivate myself by turning to another part. So in we've talked on this po podcast years ago. One of the things that I do with projects is I will have many pages of a graphic novel or book in various stages of completion, right? I don't just go... Page one, pencils, inks, colors, letters, done. Page two, pencils, inks, colors. I'll have like three pages halfway penciled, one of them partly inked, maybe even partly flatted. And the reason, that's a trick I developed to like keep the game interesting for me. So it's like, yep, the scripting isn't going well. I'm going to go back and pencil page two a little bit. That's something I know I can do right now. Mm. So that, that sort of like chunking of the chunking, if that makes sense. Uh, it sounds super nimble, honestly. It sounds like um, what you would create as the accounting of the accountability would um, need to be of a different nature, right? So mm -hmm. is it that you um, are there out? Like, what can you observe as outcomes of your choices and actions over time? Is it the um, tending a in a number of minutes to attack to the 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 wide swath of possible tasks because it sounds like that that in your nimbleness uh you're just dealing with stuff in this this general space it's like you're exploring the woods or something do you do you get um reward for different kinds of things is it how much how many different things tasks kinds of tasks did you touch or just numerically how many tasks um, uh, outcome specific things, yeah. uh, things that you find daunting versus easy or, or, um, or where you have high confidence versus low confidence. Do you want, what do you want to reward? Um, and so like that map would be a bit different. I mean, it might mm -hmm. not be a checklist of specific tasks. Like the victory donut is, is, is like, I'm, I'm, a, yeah, I, I have, I don't know what to say. Like part of me, I wanted to say I'm a simple man, right? I, I just, there's, there's a, I'm a simple man with a simple plan and it's, I'm going to eat that victory donut, my friend. Anyway, I, I'm, I, I want to, I want to sing about the donut now. Uh, <laughs> but that, but the different systems, it's just a matter of noticing that, that stuff. It's like, that's working for you. Um, sometimes extrinsic motivation. So like getting that, uh, getting the points, the acknowledgement at a, you know, Hey, good job and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
that, uh, I mean, honestly, folks could totally uh, log into the Lean Into Our Discord. And, you know, we I was going to say, yeah, yeah, we have a channel called Gentletown in our Patreon only yeah. section where it's like, it's okay to ask for a high five. That is a legit thing to ask for because, mm -hmm. yeah, we're not all in the same space. And it, it's the same thing as if you were to turn them and, like, I did it. And then you go, yes, high five. So. So to, you know, that says a lot. And, and so it could, if you're hearing motivation that works for someone else and you're, and you're, you're, you're harumphing anywhere out externally or in your head, um, then that's an interesting signal to explore I, because, okay, what works for you then? Um, because I can see that, you know, it's a small gesture, but it is a gesture and it, it's, it's like, you're not alone. So if you're like, I'm not toiling alone and I want to, I want to connect with this idea or what have you. And, yeah. um, there you go. So that could function for other people, but then if it doesn't for you, but what does do any extrinsic motivations work for you? And I wonder if that would be a fun thing to explore, um, after a break. Okay. <laughs> right. Rob is keeping us on task. He's going to get a victory donut at the end of this podcast, it sounds like. So we're going to take a break, come back, and uh, look at whether or not there's any extrinsic motivations that work for me. I'm certain there are, but but we'll see what they are if, if I can name them. Uh, first, we've got to thank some people who make this project possible. If this is helping you think and do useful creative work, a great way you can keep this thing going is by supporting us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash lean into art is the place to go it's where you can give us a monthly upvote where you'll find everything we make here at lean into art including the extra leans the shows we record only for people who support us on patreon i want to thank five people who've been supporting us on a regular ongoing basis cameron callahan thank you cameron shawnee redfern thank you shawnee uh ashley knapp thank you ashley robert clemens jr thank you robert and gail bushman and we have recently uh, uh, released or announced or rolled out the Lean to Art Labs. Do you need a place to show your work in progress? We could all use encouragement and feedback. Have you found the gentle creative project pressure of a due date or demo day useful? Talk about extrinsic motivation. The Lean into Art monthly 90-minute lab session is a place where we host creative groups and professionals developing their projects. The constraints give it meaning. It's a chance to show up, to share what you're working on, what might be blocking you, and we'll be there to encourage you and find new possibilities. It's also a place to work in the presence of others, whether you choose to share or hang back. Each session held on the third Wednesday of every month is facilitated by, facilitated by one of the two hosts of Lena Tart. Both Rob and I have decades of experience in teaching and facilitation of creative groups and processes for all kinds of projects, and each session will be a unique one-time experience. Sign up to reserve your spot for the low introductory price of $10 per month through our Patreon what Patreon? Patreon.com slash Lean Into Art. Thanks to everybody who supports us there. It means a lot to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Mm. So let me do some music so we can say we're in the second part. I'm going to try to do a TikTok where I just do the, the shimmy. <laughs> Showing my age. Knock down buildings. I'm a giant ape. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the question was, does any extrinsic motivation work for me? I mean, you mean like in the sense of a reward I grant myself kind of thing? So, yeah, I mean, this is a... So extrinsic, I would say, primarily comes from outside. Okay. Intrinsic primarily comes from inside. There's a both a bothness to both, right? But mm -hmm. um, so extrinsic is almost like if it's a, if it's a system you're setting up, then you're almost like hiring something in the world to be uh, influencing you with feedback of some kind, right? Mm -hmm. It's still tough because you created it. It's, you know, you're probably it's, it's something that you are naturally motivated by, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and extrinsic comes from outside and it's maybe like a little less organic, right? Um, so like points, stickers, uh, uh, pretend money, real money, um, <laughs> you know, prizes, cash. I was, think, I was thinking about rolling out the lean tort. I'm sorry. I was thinking about productizing that and making lean tort fun bucks that can only be spent in the lean tort store. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm pushing Rob's buttons, everybody. Uh, 
No, no. Uh, so hey, fun bucks. I'm gonna talk about fun bucks. I'm gonna be done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I would say a big one for me is to avoid at all costs working on weekends. That's my prize. My prize is my weekend is a time where I get to indulge in whatever kind of non art, non facilitation, non teaching activities that I want. I'm gardening right now. Um, Ann and I are working on a pumpkin patch because I want a pumpkin patch so bad, Rob. Um, I want this Halloween to carve my own pumpkins. And so part of these little constraints that I build in my life to funnel energy and say, you're going to try to get this one test done in an hour. And time blocking, which I've also we talked about in the podcast, um, where I like dedicate blocks of time where I can do tasks that are traditionally more airbending tasks, which could be distributed over a large time. I'm saying, nope, you're going to give two and a half hours to this and you're going to do it, uh, is partially to get the reward of now you don't have to work on Saturday. Now you get to actually goof around in that pumpkin patch. So that is that is an extrinsic motivation, I would say, is having pumpkins this October. Hmm. It's tough. So like, I think, I think we are uh, like extrinsic and intrinsic. To me, that sounds intrinsic. <laughs> Okay. So if um so it'd be extrinsic if um yeah, I don't know. Can you can con really construct you can you can construct things you care about internally that that are external signals. I guess that's extrinsic motivation. It inherently means it's not from inside your brain, I think. So sorry for me being broad brush and lazy with this stuff that I should no, have. No. I, maybe I wasn't listening as carefully mapped out. I mean, I use these things when I when I think about design constraints and caring and different aspects of cognition and shaping experiences of screens and stuff like that, especially in uh, video games and whatnot. But like, you know, I wonder if extrinsic can even ever come from inside you, right? Um, it's almost like, can it? I don't. I mean, I don't know. Honestly, that's a that's a question. I don't know the answer to that. Because inherently, you're thinking about something that you care about naturally, which is those pumpkins and the experience <laughs> of making them happen. What? Why, why yeah. Is it well, I just, it's just, it, I, I'm beginning to feel like maybe there's like a, I, I, I'm suffering from a kind of myopia where it's like, if it's not something I'm doing with my hands to make a mark on the world in some way, I'm not interested in it, you know? Uh, but. Oh, sure. That's, yeah. Sure. If it's uh, it, reflecting on your own experience, you'll probably find patterns. And <laughs> face yourself. Like yeah, but, good, but I, right? I, yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, is actually, I I had this conversation with Anne recently where I was really trying to get at like, do I ask for things very often? Like, am I ever like saying like I need this and I need this now? And I do, but guess what? When I ask for something, it's because it's to like improve something to, in my work. It's like I need this to like so I, I can do that. I very mm -hmm. rarely say like, "Oh, I need a new jacket so bad, right? I want this new jacket." Uh, I got I just got new glasses. Literally got like three days ago. Why? Because I was having trouble seeing when I was drawing. Otherwise, I wouldn't care, right? So it's like mm -hmm. I. I in some ways, I don't think I've changed much from that intense twenty-year-old who was like, "It's all about comics," you know. And I, I look back at him with love and 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 and, and, and a kind of a caring compassion, like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, it's okay. There's other things too, but maybe not. Maybe I haven't changed that much." So, um, <laughs> I hear you. <ya. laughs> Uh, Dan Michigan once described it as it's almost like a sickness and he didn't mean that in any kind of disparaging or mean hearted way. He just meant like the way a sickness sort of acts on you and you don't really feel like you're in control of it all the time. But uh, yeah, I guess I, I've not employed extrinsic motivation in that way. And well, I don't know why. I don't know why. Like bonus things. It's yeah. kind of like, like bonus um, experience is it's valid too, right? I mean, I'm I'm working on a system that I I'm not ready to report on, but like it's way more complicated than a victory donut because you know I got other stuff to get done. 
and and I'm working with the constraints that I have currently in my in my um you know life roles that I occupy and uh well it's I need something more um nuanced and complex than a victory donut mm. and um but there is something about doing more externalizing and stuff right because I'm actually I'm experimenting with something that that's like earning it's basically in-game currency that then I can turn into real currency as a small bonus. Right. And to be like, you know, and I'm probably, I would most likely spend like, let's say it was like 50 bucks in a month or a hundred bucks somewhere in there. It's that range, right? It's, it's not like get a pool money, right. Or get like, um, you know, uh, midlife crisis mobile money, right? It's like just, <laughs> you know, maybe get it, you know, get it, do a big order at jet pens kind of money, right? Um, mm, and mm. that kind of thing would be, um, and so I probably will end up spending it on, um, you know, stuff that I want to use day in, day out, right? Um, but then again, you know, maybe, you know, maybe new video game socks, right? Video game related socks. I've recently, you know, like, like things that, uh, that I would just wouldn't normally do. Right. So anyway, so externalizing and trying to come from different angles, I think in a way saying extrinsic motivation at the very least is trying to get you, um, looking, pull back at a different perspective and you're attempting to get signal from somewhere else. Ah, um, gotcha. Okay. Yes. So yes, the, then there is. I feel a strong desire to achieve the respect of certain creative people in my life, right? There is, there are things I'm doing with my current project where I'm like, I want X to look at this and do the Mr. Miyagi nod at me. I want that from that person so yeah. bad. Right. And yeah. so I'm thinking, but like that, that is, I feel like that's a broader, more long-term motivation. Like that doesn't get me to the boards when I'm stuck. Right. But that's definitely something that I'm I'm I am feeling an energy to get through this draft of my outline so I can send it to the people in question and say, OK, tell me, tell me it's clever. Tell me it's clever. <laughs> point, point at the parts where it's not, please point at the parts where it's not. You know, um, there's that. So I want that. That is something I have no control over. Right. Well, I have control over to the extent of the effort and, and skill that I put into the thing that I put in front of them. But then ultimately it's up to them to decide how they feel about it. So. And I wonder, and, and this is where like the ex, the truly extrinsic stuff, I don't know how much like, again, direct control we have over that other than like choosing where, which opportunities give us which kind of extrinsic thing. Right. Yeah. So, you know, crossing a due date threshold of this work at this quality and then getting paid. Right. That's, that is external. That's, mm -hmm. you know, definitely extrinsic. And, um, yeah. So, so that's that, an that, interesting that, idea. That. Your idea of like setting aside like bonus points to turn into bucks, I think is, mm -hmm. a, is an interesting idea. I could see that moving me. I could see that making me move the needle a little bit in that. I, it's not something I usually permit myself is to have like discretionary income to just like do whatever I want with. Like that's something that oh. it's like, yeah, it, it's not that I'm like hurting for like I'm 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 not waiting in line for donuts and coffee, you know, from the the, the relief uh, booth, but mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it's that it's just it's it's not a it's not a framework that I really operate within a lot, right? Like I said earlier, whenever I get something, when I get an upgrade, it's usually to upgrade my business, upgrade my work, um, mm -hmm. but never like I got a snazzy thing because I wanted a snazzy thing, right? And I say well, that with all these action figures behind me. These were gifts, by the way, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Very few of these things that I buy with my own money. These are like, I have well, kind friends in my life. Yeah. Hypothetically, are they gifts that help that, that got you to do stuff? You know, like, yeah, yeah. They like hey, you scratch my back, you know, you get some action figures. <laughs> <laughs> That's external. Actually, yeah. No, one of the very first comics projects I ever did, I was 19 years old and I did it in trade for uh, a box full of Transformers memorabilia. And what else was in there? 
it was a whole bunch no. of transformers it was like a bunch of like like mead folders and like like uh note, notebooks and stuff from like 1984 a pencil case and a few other things and i was like all right you got a deal i'll try you five pages <laughs> like that's like something a fourth grader would do i'm doing it when i'm 19 <laughs> i yeah i that's um it, well, that's payment, right? I mean, so that's extrinsic yeah. motivation, right? It's like I wouldn't yeah. have done this without that that energy coming in. Yeah, and um, and so, but you can choose like what 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 is acceptable in that, and and it's it's just one building block in the system of of setting you up to like get the stuff you want to get done done, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so let's see, um lot of different possibilities to explore in this um i'm wondering if we should do another break and then talk about fun bucks okay yes yes let's do that let's talk about fun bucks i because i want to see if i can find a silver lining in fun bucks because i know this is something where you got a lot of a lot of big feelings on it but maybe we can find a more nuanced look at how fun bucks could work Uh, i'm gonna yep i'm like a (laughs) mad raccoon about to tackle that trash can and rip it apart i'm i'm ready (laughs) okay well we'll take one more break and then we will uh if i can get to my ad copy there it is okay one more break and then we're going to come back and talk about fun bucks you're going to watch rob get like a a rabid raccoon at me and see how well i can parry with the trash can lid So if this is helping you think and do useful work, another way you can support what we do is to interact with the stuff that we make. And the thing that I make that I hope you will interact with is Baron Von Baer and the case of the Two-Faced statue. Baron Von Baer, expert in the occult, never once wanted to be an adventurer, but when years of hard work are demolished along with an ancient stone guardian that rendered harmless his collection of dangerous magical objects, he will have to enter the fray at last, and he will learn to his dismay that those objects are not at all what he believed. You can go to baronvonbear.com to join my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month or subscribe to my mailing list for free to get some exclusive looks at the process of making my next middle grade graphic novel. baronvonbear.com. That's easy enough to remember. How about you, Rob? Oh, I make a video game called Guitar Fredder. And what you're looking at is a sneak preview at what's coming up. I am working on a big update and actually turning Guitar Fredder into two games because there's going to be a free version and the paid version. The paid version is going to cost a little more money but have more features. And that is good for all of us because Guitar Fredder is this game that makes an action puzzle out of memorizing the note positions on a guitar fretboard, right? So something you might be naturally motivated to do, but also making it uh, just extra playful and fun. And 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 um, it's it's a different way to sort of practice the um well that experience right and like knowing what's on the guitar fretboard and you're looking again at the sneak preview of what's coming up and the work in progress so it's still coming along but like so custom tuning it's got lefty flip is coming in the in the upgrade to the full version of guitar fretter there's battle the regular game there's four different kinds of guitars that you can play the ninja mode no hints practice mode if you're like i just want a guitar chart i I just i'm gonna sit on the bus and play around with like you know, just a guitar with no pressure of a, of a game. Wah! Anyway, or I can go back and say, you know what? I'm going to get in battle mode. I'm going to play a five-string bass. I'm going to make it difficult. Go for it. And anyway, that's what Guitar Fretter is. And um, there's more updates coming. And this is all uh, available at guitarfretter.com. And it'll bring you to my itch.io page. Um, and, uh, so I'm still playing in lefty flip mode. So that is awesome. (laughs) Wow. All right. Anyway, that's, uh, again, a little demo of the work in progress of guitar fretter. Get, you can get that. Uh, let's see if I can show you the page. It's do do. How about there? Yep. You'll you'll see this itch.io page. If you go to guitarfretter.com. Pick up your copy today or, or, you know, feel free to wait for the upgrade too. <laughs> it's coming. I, yeah. You're reminding me of how, like when I listen to old radio shows from when I, old ones, like from like the 1940s and they ever, they do the ad for like, you know, blue bonnet spread or whatever. They're always like, make sure to pick some up 
tomorrow. I'm like, oh, that's right, because stores used to close. <laughs> and so now we say pick it up today because everything is very instant. It didn't always be. So anyway, um, mm. fun bucks, Rob. Mm. Fun mm. bucks. Mm. What's so fun about them? Uh, podcast over. Got nothing to say. <laughs> no. Um, okay. So uh, some workplaces have... Uh, you know, it's pretty common to have a bonus, it, you know, incentives, right? That's another word for what we're talking about. Uh, incentives for, um, like, think about what we've been talking about all, all this podcast. It's like you're trying to arrange something to get you to behave in a certain way, okay? And then if that arrangement is not as controlled by you, other than you choose to be there or not, there could be uh, an environment that's wired to... Um, provide feedback based on behaviors that they want to see. And if that's done ethically and inclusively, I think that can be awesome. And you get something that's a, a gameful experience, things that are gamified, right? I think that's a word now. Um, I don't think that was a word when we first started. I mean, people used it a lot, right? It was, it was really popular around 2012. Um, anyway. <laughs> Not as bad as you regardless, <laughs> which is also yeah. a word now. <laughs> yeah. Dictionaries, yeah. Like um, language evolves, but yeah. So, um, when your when your work is gamified and you have some kind of well, a bonus for a certain behavior, getting to you know get something done by a certain date would be a, a really you know direct one. It could be set up where get that done, or you know, big negative consequences happen, right? Um, or it could be, or we acknowledge this behavior and here's, here's money, or you can have peers bo you know, give you bonuses in some organizations. And I've, I mean, or, or yearly things, depending if the company makes its numbers and all this stuff, right? These are all, I mean, gameful systems in a way. Um, but then, um, so fun bucks, let's say I experienced this at a, at a company and let's pretend that the, I, I made this term because it was essentially points that were in lieu of payment, even though this was a job and I was performing work that the company made money with my work, they got paid for. So anyway, I would expect my signal of correct and positive, um, like stuff they want to continue to happen like that, that behavior, keep it up. Well, then, well, what? Why would you turn something from um, like money that's more recognized in a wider environment, like you know, tradable currency, into like a, a pretend currency? Like, why would you do that? Control, right? Mm -hmm. um, flexibility. So, um, so after a while, I mean, I kept earning these fun bucks. You know, yay me getting this positive feedback and acknowledgement. I should be, you know, so so pleased. But like, it was there's all this stuff of like, well, now it's, 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 um, it's, well, that's only spendable in the company store. Well, I don't like what they have or now, like, so now I'm experiencing all kinds of other things where this was meant to be, um, encouraging my behavior and I'm pissed off because I can't, I don't want anything they have. And they just pretended to feel like, you know, they accomplished the job of providing me, you know, a, uh, positive, feedback and encouragement right and i'm like no you didn't actually I, you know i'm looking for a new gig <laughs> uh because because this is the arrangement this is that i expect but i you know not everyone has to have my expectations not everyone is wired like i'm wired as far as what i want to be um my system of feedback for this arrangement right um but um but yeah i mean my exit interview was full of this as i said you know, we're not here to pretend to do the work and play and, or even skill build in a school or whatever. I mean, yeah, we're, we're learning as we go, but it's, we're in the real world getting currency. And that's what I expect as my bonus. <laughs> um, Dis Disney parks played with this idea, didn't they? Where you would get Disney bucks to use inside of the park. And the Simpsons made fun of this, where they said, like, they're like, what's Disney bucks? They're like, it's like money, but fun. 
<laughs> and, and, and so like they even kind of hinted at fun bucks and then like homer get, like gets like a whole bunch of it oh is it itchy and scratchy land that's what it was um mm-hmm. and then he gets inside and like nobody accepts the itchy and scratchy bucks right and he's like don't but <laughs> but i mean this is a conversation that i've had with other event organizers in the past where everybody's kicking around this idea at one point or another like what if we had some kind of fun money that people could like buy into at the gate and then they're incentivized to use it inside. I'm like, I see the logic, but it seems like a clumsy way to incentivize participation. Surely you can find other ways to incentivize people to seek out and look and discover at a thing. Right. So, yeah. And, and I think there's another piece of that, that I I'm feeling kind of itchy about is like it, it inherently removes some autonomy you you have to use this. You're you are compelled to use this in this environment. It doesn't work anyplace else, right? I don't like things that remove my autonomy. And I think that that's something where that when we talk about tricking ourselves into things, I think what I rebel against is that too. Like, am I doing this? Uh, am I doing that scene in American Beauty where like the the wife, the real estate agent, is like slapping her face, like get in there, you gotta go in there, you gotta you gotta do the job, you pull yourself together, you know? Are you doing that? Or maybe Ugh. that works for some people. Uh, it it looks painful to me, <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but like, so are you, you know, being Sergeant Slaughter to yourself? You're gonna work till you wish you were dead and then keep going, or are you finding ways to say like, come on, buddy, we're gonna, I'm I'm your teammate. Let's find a way to like get you to like want to do this again. And uh, and some sometimes you don't know. Like you, if you have an idea for giving yourself the feedback. And you haven't tested it, well, yeah. you might be sergeant slaughtering yourself. But like, um, hopefully, well, you notice that your system has, um, it's not a good fit for, for what you're doing and you make some adjustments. And yeah. you, you learn why. You, you, get, you get some experience by, you know, practical, um, um, yeah, well, I guess you get ex- to experience your game by, by living in it for a bit. And make adjustments. Um, and then again, and again, it's, this is all about your agency. When you're setting up a system that's all for you, then, um, you know, hopefully you're, 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 you're making some, some customization and choices, even if you're like, well, victory donut, that's fine. I don't got it. I don't need to make a new system. That's fine. It's right there. It's done. Boom. Now it's my victory. Great. Great. Um, hopefully you ask is like, well, why, like, why does this, does this seem like a fit for you? And, and that kind of thing. Um, but, um, and then in, when you're engaging in a system or you're creating one for someone else and, you know, now you have need to think about, yeah, there's some interesting um, conundrums when you're creating a system of control that is about directing and encouraging the behavior of other people. Do you really have their benefits in mind? And, and this is when folks who are have a lot of like ability to act and power and fund things and and following a whim if you have a lot of power and you follow a whim you can hurt stuff you can hurt people you can cause a lot of negative results yep so um you know having care and thoughtfulness and inclusiveness and how you think about you know so fine being attracted to the idea you could instinctively have like a hunch that there's a fit for this somewhere go further than that if you're about to you know make some gameful experience as a part of your organization or whatnot um like yeah but oh my god it would ha in a crappy a, a nightmare would be um honestly someone saying victory donut at scale Oh and my doing gosh. <laughs> kind of art up or whatever the hell. And and um and then getting businesses to agree and fund it and stuff and like blah. Oh no, what have I done? Uh-huh. Um but you know, that's you know, we all opt into games in some way, shape, or form, and we have things that motivate us and things that don't. And yeah, if you tune into that, you make it work for you, you're enhancing your agency, you're building yourself up and not tearing yourself down. If you opt into other people's games tune into that uh, and and listen if if it's um if it's not building you up if fun bucks work for you okay um you must have a lot of alignment with where that organization's going and how they look at stuff 
So once again, we come to the conclusion of experiment and pay attention, capture the information in some form that's usable for you, and then iterate. Mm. And then the kid who's listening right now says, ah, nuts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought I'd at least hear a hear someone, you know, act out of angry raccoon. I know. I I fooled you. Sorry. Um and 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 no prescriptions, no angry raccoons. That's how it, that, that's what it's like over here. If that's you naturally motive, you know, if you're intrinsically motivated to be like, oh, I wanted the thoughtfulness anyway. Yeah, we're on the same page. Oh, Either well. way, no fun. <laughs> So thank you, Rob, for this discussion. I feel like this is a good creative work chat. Um, and thanks for everybody who showed up in the chat, watched the live stream, and interacted with us. We record these every two weeks on Thursdays, and we stream it live on YouTube, Twitch, and even in the Lena Twart Discord server. Uh, LenaTwart.com slash Discord is the place to go to get in there and get into... There's public channels where you can comment on past episodes, suggest future episodes, and then if you support us on Patreon, you got a special Patreon-only section where you can get feedback from fellow leaners in Castle Level Up and in Gentletown. So, uh, yeah, we'll be back in two weeks. Until next time, I have been... Uh, Jersey Drozd of leanintoart.com and rss.jdrozd.com for everything that I make. And I'm Rob Stenzinger. I come from leanintoart.com and you can find more stuff I make that I write. Articles like the Victory Donut at interactive-storyteller.com. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart. And you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.